Entonces, um, I'm not sure I'm following this. Uh, so you're saying uh, those, those, let's say, those resources are interconnected? Yeah, be? if they're interconnected, yes. Oh, okay. I think we have a couple. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I just wonder because we. Mm -hmm. I guess that wasn't nice. Oh. I don't see the. <laughs> Uh, oh, Jing Han is here. Harrison. Hi. Hi. Okay. Hi. It's great you are here. And uh, <coughs> so Jing Han will be our president. Yes. Okay. I think so. How do I give you this? And maybe you shall end the screen share, and I would I will uh, share my screen. Yes, let me try that. Okay, go ahead. Nice. Let me see, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so I'll begin my uh, share on the quota management. Okay. Uh, okay. So here's my outline. I introduced the targets, the overview structure, and some database uh, tables, few key and fields in database and some how we should implement the transactions in the database. And there are some open issues we can discuss after my presentation. Uh, uh, first of all, I will uh, share what, uh, what is our, uh, my target in implementing this uh, quota management. Uh, uh, hello, is my voice clear? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, we will provide an accelerator resource allocation management for each tenant or let's say project. Well, now we, we have accelerator resources such as FPGA, SBDK, and etc. And we aim to control the allocation of accelerators at project level or we can implement it uh, in, uh, at a project user level. And it is open now whether we should implement it to, towards the uh, user level quota management. So here's our structure, uh, which is widely used in Nova project, Neutron project, and Manila project. So we have a quota engine which provides methods and for uh, less, uh, like register resources, reserve, commit, rollback. And the last three methods uh, are. Excuse me, there's a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Before we go into the details, basic question though. Uh, I was talking to Howard just as part of the session. If you're going to represent every accelerator as a resource class. In uh, the voice is quite small. I cannot hear it clearly. Okay. Well, I'm going to unmute. Well, yeah. No. So, is it better now? Yeah, I'm not uh, sure. I can repeat the question. Better? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 If you are going to represent accelerators as resource classes and placement API, why are we, you can use the same quota model as resource class in Nova, right? You don't need to do anything different. So the question is we could use the quota model uh, in Nova. Is it correct? Or we need to uh, like 
do something new. Of our other projects? So is this the question? Uh, the question is, uh, since, uh, since we are using the resource provider data uh, model, yes. so mm -hmm. since NOAA has already a, a mature way of uh, supporting quota, uh, mm -hmm. we could just uh, uh, do the quota the NOAA way. So is uh, this? Yes, it's mm -hmm. the um, we shall um, just focus on how cyber project, uh, um, uh, how should we do the uh, resource allocation management uh, suitable for cyber? That is the question or issue we shall discuss today. Are there any difference uh, from NOVA? Uh, and because you see that in NOVA, uh, in, as you can see in the structure, there are many different kinds of resources divided into reservable, uh, reservable resource, countable resource, and et cetera. But so shall in, in, and in our cyber project, shall we own, uh, consider all the re accelerator resources as reservable resource, or are there any other future uh, resource that can be considered into countable resource? So we shall discuss some questions like that. Okay. So basically, we in the uh, resource allocation uh, management is similar to, or let's say it is some kind of same to the NOVA project. So I, I want to just focus on some differences today. Okay. Uh, so Mm, from this slide, I just mentioned an issue we, which we can discuss. So we sh shall we implement it, the quota management at a project level or shall we implement it at a user level? As a overview structure, we shall have in the cyber uh, the uh, resource allocation in cyber project. And somehow from my point of view, uh, the accelerator resources shall be considered as reservable resource. And let's see in this slide, um, in the, uh, in the uh, original uh, implementation, it is divided into two kinds of resources. Uh, the first one, we shall combine uh, reservable resource. It's, we, we shall achieve uh, the whole amount of resource from the database by uh, project ID and for countable resource uh, we cannot uh, get the amount of the resource only on project ID like in Nova we have key pairs which can be uh, which can be get by user ID and security group which can be get by uh, security group ID and for instances um, we can count the whole amount of instances instances we created by project ID. <laughs> so there's a difference. So should all the resources like FPGA, SPDKs, and other uh, future implemented resources be considered as only as reservable resources or are there any uh, resources that can be uh, considered as a implement of uh, countable resource? <laughs> And those are some typical tables in database, which has already been implemented in the previous project. And there are some major methods which can be implemented in the quota engine, like reserve, commit, and rollback. And because there may be some failure in uh, creating an accelerator or when we are uh, when we are processing with the drivers. So we need to, uh, first of all, reserve. And then if there are any uh, failures, we can roll back the database to the original state. And so these are the major methods which can be provided by the quota engine. And for uh, quota management in, in our project, uh, there are two kinds of uh, scenarios which quota management are triggered. 
First of all, when, the Nova, when we claim an instance with accelerators by Nova, or we release an accelerator, and that time we uh, update the quota usage table in the database, and then we trigger, trigger quota management. And as you need to roll back the database when you need to define for uh, define transaction operations uh, in the DB driver and deep in the both in database and quota drivers. Uh, so these are the three operations or methods we shall implement in our uh, quota management. First of all, we uh, first of all we update uh, whenever we have a resource re uh, request we update the reserve reservation table and then if there are no failures or the requested resources does not exceed the quota so we update the uh, record in the uh, let's say uh, uh, we update the record in the quota usage table and if there are any failure in accelerator preparation, we just roll back the, the database into the original state. And so these are open issues, and we shall focus on um, the, the first two issues I've just uh, mentioned. And for the third issue, it is um, currently um, for Keystone project, there is currently a specs and uh, discussing on a unified quota management ma managing uh, which which can be used for uh, multiple projects uh, so it is so this, the keystone project is now aiming at providing a general or universal quota, quota management uh, implementation for all the projects so this is also uh, this is another issue we can discuss So that's all about my uh, presentation. So if anybody are interested in uh, this, this three issues, we can have a discussion. Okay, questions, comments? Uh, the question is, how does this differ from NOVA's model? Mm, the difference is mainly lies to these three issues, I believe, because in Nova content management, it has been implemented to the uh, project user level. Should we implement only implement the project level, or we uh, or we expect the there is a scenario we need to control a user level content management and another probable differences between cyber project and uh, nova project uh, is that we need not consider we not we need not divide the different resources into different kinds of resources should we only just uh, should we only uh, manage uh, or if we are only managing accelerators then we shall just we shall just implement the uh, reservable uh, resource and that is okay. Okay. So and also, if we need, if this is not a, a very, uh, is if this is not a very, uh, let's say, uh, uh, emergent uh, or let's, it's not a very uh, busy issue. We should just we can uh, we can also wait until the Keystone project uh, for, and wait for them to implement a unified quota managing solution because they are working on it. Yeah. So, so uh, are you clear uh, on his answer? So, yeah, so it depends on the, yeah, how, how we answer these questions. Yeah. You have a keystone, but they address custom resource classes when they deal with this quota management space. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the details matter. Okay, so so about the first question, does Cyborg only need the project level quota, or it also needs the user level quota like Nova does? I would push for user level quota, but 
I think that depending on the scope of the Keystone Unified Quota implementation, then I don't know if it hurts to wait until then. Do we know anything about when that is actually supposed to be? You know, they were talking about it this morning. Is there anybody in that room? Yeah, it was. I would say it's ongoing. No, so to speak, um, there, are, there are a couple of some issues that require like so those people thinking about that. And the main the main open point is about how we could consume those specific quotas. Because defining those is not really a problem to have Houston products. So um, there were a couple of open questions about, um, for example, say, um, how we would set the limits, how we would enforce the limits, or stuff. So, um, if I were you, I would like have to really pay attention to it for the moment. I know it's uh, it's pretty tough for you, but uh, yeah. looks to me it's not happening like in the next cycle at least. Mm -hmm. Sort of the impression I got. Like we have a bunch of these good ideas, but yeah, you know, I mean, there are good talks. Yeah, but the way the way nice. these things come together, it's going to be a while. But I mean, if people are interested in that, then that is a good idea. Okay, back to the uh, user level versus project level. So Dutch, you are uh, supporting to also support user level. Well, I mean, yeah. It depends on the, the amount of work required, right? Like, does it? I don't really have a clear picture on what would need to be done, I guess. Or is it just like the feature that would be nice to have? I mean, I'd say for sure. User level quota on any accelerator resource should absolutely be there. Okay. Because otherwise, in practical experience, users just go crazy, you know, if you let them. Okay. <coughs> So about the second question, uh, should uh, all the resources in Cyborg, it's like, I, I, I would prefer Cyborg to like, uh, similar to, uh, to NOAA since uh, if we consider smart NICs, right? Then we still need to consider the security groups, all those kinds of resources that, uh, what we call countable resources in, no so we still have security groups and something like that in cyber? I believe so. Okay. So I apologize for uh, not, for, I probably missed the, no problem. the crucial part of this, but what, what is this concept of reservable resource? How does that map to? Uh, uh, reservable resource? Uh, it means that we can get to the whole amount or we can count the whole amount of resource only with uh, project ID from database, and for something like key pairs or security groups, we we can find those uh, we can find their amount by uh, other keys like uh, user ID or security group ID other than project ID. But for dynamically allocated resource, I guess it's DA. How do you manage those? I mean. You can uh, have the FPGA dynamically, and then have different resources. So, how do you manage that? Uh, yes, uh, because I think that we have we have already implemented a FPGA driver, something like that, and it shall be considered as a reservable resource, as similar to instances in Nova, I think. Okay, so one device, one PCI device, which is the attached FPGA. Uh, which means that we can count uh, the whole, um, maybe I will take, uh, I'll, I'll give an example in Nova. We can count the, uh, uh, the amount of instances uh, that belongs to a uh, specific project. And, but things like key pairs, we can also, be, uh, or security group, it belongs to a security group ID, but not a project ID, I think. So it's really healthy to consider these things as resources, like whether that term makes sense for this 
an instance a resource? Is a is a project ID a resource? I mean, I don't, I'm, that's I think that's part of the kind of. See, to make it concrete, I think there's a sort of clear FPGA model, right? FPGA is a resource provider and placement API terms. So FPGA may contain one or more regions which can be independently programmed, mm -hmm. which can be considered nested resource providers, right? If you put an IT stack as where we inside a region, that will be an instance of resource class, a resource okay. instance. A region type, a region itself could be exposed to a region to program directly, in which case the region itself is the resource class. Yeah, the resource, class, yeah. Right? So those are the things I have in mind at least. Right. So if you call them a reservable resource, to me it sounds like you're going to reserve it and allocate it later. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. right. And there's no, that's, like that's, what, that's what it sounded like to me as well, which is why, <laughs> but, but we don't currently have a concept of reservation as distinct from allocation in placement. Exactly. Right? Yes. And so if you're going to do that, you're going to have to put something on top of this that when you say reserve, what it actually does is it makes an allocation but maybe it only allocates it to like the service instead. And then when you do a commit, oh, now it actually like gives it over to the instance or whatever it is that it's giving it to, right? right. So that, that distinction is gonna have to be bolted on top of what we have today, right? Is it already there in Nova? I don't think it's there. There is, no, that's what I'm exactly. saying. That's what I'm saying. So, so are we asking for placement to, uh, to pick up this concept of reserve and then allocate? Or are we ask, or are we saying that Cyborg is going to build that on top of and distinct from placement? Why do we need to do it in the first place? I mean, that's a good question. Maybe <laughs> because maybe because we want a, an all or nothing. No, you know, I, I just feel that the specific hardware is that the resources need to be defined. I mean, the quota model needs to be defined in Cyborg, and the fact that we have the allocation made on, on, on placement is a different thing. The fact that they set a limit for you for using that lesson needs to be on cyber because those folks have the function mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the fact that um, the fact that how the resource is consumed is probably something like placement does, but given they can actually reconcile the information by calling the placement API, mm -hmm. that's why they still have a single sort of code, and that's why they need to, to keep that in their, in their mind. Mm -hmm. And so as far as the reservation goes. I mean, I, I, I don't get exactly what you mean by reserve. You mean that, say I want to create a new FPGA resource, but I'm not having yet allocated it, right? So the impression that I get based on the, the verbiage in here is that you want to say, I would like my instance to get these, this set of FPGA resources. Uh, don't do it yet. Just go out and make sure that when I ask for it to happen, that it's guaranteed to happen. Right now, if we go out and say get allocation candidates, whatever you get back, there's no guarantee that when you take one of those allocation requests and say give me that, that it's still going to be there. Mm -hmm. So what they're asking for is a way to say, okay, I got my allocation requests. Now I need you to go take this one. I want to use it, but I don't want it allocated yet. No, and then when I say commit, now go get it. I'm, I'm not a specialist of the quota management in in, in Nova, but what I know. Then by the by the moment that uh, 
The project ID and user ID? Yeah, okay. it's attached to any it's attached to any consumption, any allocation. That's why that's the, the original question that I'm asking. Should should it be fixed? Because what you can do is you can have Cyborg or whatever your reservation system is say, I'd like to make an allocation with this project ID and user ID, right? And but make the claim exist against Cyborg instead of against the instance, for example. And then once I've done that, now I know I've locked that guy down. I've got I, I own it if I want it. Now I say, okay, now go and count how many of this project ID I have FPGAs for, and is that still under quota, which the Cyborg database knows what that quota is, placement does not, okay? And if, it's ex if it exceeds, then you deallocate that thing from, from, owning, from Cyborg owning it, and then fail. But if it's still in the quota, now you say, okay, I wanna keep that allocation, but move it over to the instance, which we have a way of doing that, right? Of saying, I don't want you to deallocate and reallocate, I just want you to sh move it over and now it is owned by the instance, and now you succeed. And you say the instance gets the FPGA and you move on, right? This sounds like reservation in the sense of not quotas, but ensuring that certain users are certain amount of resource available. That's correct. Whereas quota to me means like you cannot exceed. It's not That's like ensuring reservation. But you're using one, you're using the one to implement the other. That's what I'm, I'm asking, is that what you're doing or not? Like, I, I don't understand. Whether oh, well, uh, well, I believe the, the reservation table are updated after we checked whether it is over the quota or not. Okay. So after we, after we check whether the allocation, uh, if, if it is not uh, over the quota, and we register the re reservation record into the reservation table, and we update this record, and then we, such as we launch instance, and if it is failed, when we launch instance due to let's say memory uh, out of memory, and then we find the the reservation record in the reservation table, and we see all oh, it uh, takes up like uh, two hundred, uh, or it it takes up two CPU cores, and then we deallocate it. Right, so, that makes sense. But how do you prevent race conditions? 
what do you mean? In, in risk conditions? Raise conditions. So now I've got two two threads come in. Uh, uh, yeah. I've got I've got ten. My cord is ten. I'm at nine. Uh, the first one comes in and says, "Can I have my reservation for for the tenth one, please?" And then before we're done, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you you go and you look in your reservations table and say, "Yep, you you can have it." And then the second thread comes in before you process that and says, "I'd like my tenth reservation, please." And it, it says, "Yes, I'm at nine, so go ahead, you can have it." And now you end up with eleven. Uh, it checks whether uh, it synchronized the actual usage uh, with the database before it checks whether the requested resource is, exists the, the quota or not. Right, so you, you have a two-stage reservation process then, because your reservation... So you, there's no need to implement a lock or some, something like that because it always synchronizes the actual value uh, with the database before it checks uh, whether it exceeds the quota limitation or not. Okay, I thought it was an asset. So I thought it was a begin and uh, then check and then commit. But, that, but that's, that, that's exactly what I'm asking, is that uh, construct we, we would have to be... It sounded like that with the rollback. Exactly, and that's the construct that you would have to build on yeah. top of the data, on top, you can't build it into the database, you have to build it on top of the database, right? Yeah, especially, if you're using, especially if you're using placement as it mm -hmm. stands today. Mm -hmm. So again, we don't have a, this a separate concept of reserve and then commit, right? In placement. No, I don't see it happening. Right, I don't see that coming soon. Not not in the next release. Not while J pipes draws breath. So, so <laughs> I should be more specific. So the reserve here is just another state that's, it will, that will be in. It wouldn't be in the placement database. It would, no, be, it would be in the cyborg, cyborg database, right? And you, you would sort it would the way that I described it earlier, which may or may not be the way you do it, but the way I described it earlier, you would pseudo represent that reserved state in placement database by having the allocation belong to this nebulous entity that is cyborg instead of belonging to the instance that you're eventually going to. If that makes sense, cyborg has to keep track of that that the fact that there is a reservation of a certain amount. That's and destined for that instance. And then you have to ask Cyborg who owns what to find out which resources are allocated. Uh, not to ask, not to find out where they're allocated, only to ask where the reservations are, uh, okay. right? That, that haven't yet been committed or, okay. or rolled back. Yeah, okay, right. so then they're first committed to Cyborg, and then when you give them out to the user, you can actually switch them over. And okay. that's where you can solve your race condition. Yeah. Because as soon, when I go to shift a reservation from cyborg ownership right to instance ownership which is essentially doing that commit yeah. at that point i can see the for reals whether I, the number of reservations that i have outstanding is and going to that's, why, and that's why you have the rollback after the last step so if you, you could fail, if you fail the whole, nobody had it in the, if, I, if i didn't miss anything you had it in the last one so you had the rollback after the last step so you have the first uh, check to see if you reserve that amount mm -hmm. and then you get to the step where you actually introduce them and you can see the quotas and then you can actually roll back all the way correct yeah yeah so it's reason whoa okay if you do it like, sure. yeah. all the important stuff for me oh, that's right i'll do if i do it again just these people get wet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Henry, uh, have you got the, 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 the suggestion? Uh, you mean this uh, suggestion to the issues I mentioned, or? Uh, we just discussed. Uh, you, you mean the reservation, those two stage reservation? Uh, yeah. Uh, so I believe they, just, they, I believe they, we should just keep the keep keep with the original implementation because I can see, we can see that there are they are conditions which accelerator preparation will fail and we shall roll back the database. So I believe there should be no modification to this kind of well yeah that's what I think that's what I'm asking which is in on this page um, uh, yeah. the question becomes which when you say database, which database is that? When you say reservation table, where does that ta which database is that table in? You know, when you say in use equal, you know, plus equals delta, 
Where is that? Uh, you're, you're oh, you're in the database. Uh, okay, the quotas, the quota usage database are uh, in, let's say, just. Be, uh, Those are cyborg databases? Uh, yeah, it's just cyborg or Nova in the project database. Right. Okay. And we have different tables. Yeah. Quota reservation quota it, usage. Clar yeah, it's yeah, so clarity. Yeah, it's not an error in the presentation. Yeah. And the re reserved value will always be zero outside a transaction or outside a commit. Not that I would expect that level of detail to have been in the slide in the first place, but I understand that that's. Oh, uh, you're, you're done now. You know what you expected of that. <laughs> There's no use behind it. To me, it seems like a generic problem, not specific to actual papers. So to be solved in a generic way. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's why I asked if, if you needed any inheritance in the quotas. Mm. Because if, if you need that inheritance, then you have to solve that problem generically as well. So you, you get multi layered approach. Sure. Yeah. So maybe it makes sense to wait for these two to do it first. Maybe wait for that. The suggestion Keystone is already doing it. Yeah. Like maybe we should wait for that to happen first. Well, it would be really interesting to to make sure and have uh, interested parties there to make sure that you actually get what you want. Mm. Sure. <laughs> right. Yes. And right. also perhaps contribute because it might be a faster way to get. True. So, uh, shall we like contribute to the unified quota in Keystone or? Like try out the inside or first. Or you can always. What is uh, the suggestion? I mean, I, I'm not really part of this, but I you can try out something that works, and mm -hmm. then you can try to adopt that. That's how I would work anyway. Because you, you, I think, or you don't have anything of this in place already, or this is just an idea stage still. Uh yeah. Idea stage. Uh, idea okay. stage. Okay, then maybe you can go to to just on track that out. The question is just if you get enough momentum to. Because you're now depending on another project to deliver the thing you're trying to help out with. I'm not sure I understand though how uh, this this level of information would be applicable to Keystone in a generic way. Like I, I mean, I'm, maybe I just probably haven't thought it through enough. But I don't understand how how we're going to get this level this level of depth and still have it be called Keystone when we're done. Oh, it well, depends on the uh, yeah, well, it just depends on your um, semantics, basically. Okay. From my perspective, anyway. I mean, are, so, are so these are these quotas that we're talking about here the same quotas that they were talking about this morning in Keystone? I wasn't in Keystone. Okay. Mm, I believe they are the same quota management. Yeah. They are talking. So, so it's similar anyway. So the question is if the logics is the same and if they can be applied to the same kind of data, so you can have some kind of metadata uh, namespace or something like that, where you can actually run your quota in to the Keystone. To make that work. Mm -hmm. Good night. <laughs> 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 it's just so space. No, I mean that. But now, yeah, it, it's just a it's, it's a question of how you want to solve. The so generic resources, so it's CPU, memory, actually, or whatever. Even local memory in FPGA could be considered in the same category. Yeah. So put all of them in the same bucket. The notion of users and those are generic. So everything is generic. The only problem you get into eventually is the one we talked about earlier, where where your uh, your <coughs> GPU nodes or your FPJ nodes are just overloaded with normal VMs, and then you need to like migrate something to get a, another node to actually access the VM or so, or access the FP, FPJ. So that's the the next step of this because you, then you get a like a dependency between them. Mm, that's it. Yeah, and that's a higher level of orchestration. Yeah. But I mean, you, it, as long as you can live migrate and that and that works, you can actually live migrate just by anything. Right. Yeah. So the and most you just I, everybody uses Ceph. It's it's fine. Okay. Sure. Android and just Android. Yeah. So I mean, I think the most useful uh, 